Here's one that gets messed up all the time. Redundancy versus resiliency. They're not the same. The catch is you can't have one without the other and both are critical to designing and deploying a highly available network solution. Failure to understand this is the basis of every network outage and performance issue that I've encountered. Hi, I'm Jim Schrader and today we're talking about redundancy versus resiliency from a physical design perspective. So let's dig a little deeper into these two terms. Redundancy, what is it? It's two of something, two chassis, two modules, two links. It means you have a backup to take over for the primary system if it fails. Resiliency defines the ability to recover, converge or self heal and restore normal operations when a redundant system fails. So in order to have resiliency, we must have redundancy. Let's use a simple example to show what this looks like in the real world. Take a look at this diagram. We have redundant fiber optic connections between the two buildings, so we have a redundant solution. But is this a resilient solution? No, we actually have two single points of failure that would defeat this redundant solution. The demarcation points labeled D and the underground pipe are each single points of failure. It's funny, we call trenchers and backhoes fiber optic cable finders because they seem to be extremely effective at finding fiber optic conduits buried in the ground and cutting them in half. So much for our redundant fiber optic cables. Same with the demarcation points. Here we have a single panel that collects all the external data and communication circuits coming into the building. Fire, water, squirrels, or any single event can kill your redundancy here. Because we have two of each, this is a redundant solution, but it's not a resilient solution. Resiliency ensures that no single failure will bring down a redundant solution. So let's update the diagram. First, we create a second underground pipe. For this to be effective, it don't lay them next to each other. The paths have to be separated by as much distance as possible and enter on separate sides of the building. By entering in different places, we've created two physically separate demarcation points. Lose any one and there's always an alternate path. So cable finders, environmental events, and those pesky squirrels can't touch us. So have we designed a redundant solution? Yes. Do we have a resilient solution? We do. Why? Because no single event can defeat this physical design. It's bulletproof, barring a campus extinction event. These concepts should be extended to all communications and data circuits, and you should work with your local service provider to design and implement. In some cases, creating a second physical path is too costly or it's just not possible. In these cases, building building wireless is an effective solution. We just touched on one part of an overall design strategy from a physical design perspective. Part two of this video will cover resilient logical design. Also, to get the big picture, make sure to check out our campus design guide. You can find links to the campus design guide and the follow up to this video in the info card in the top right hand corner of your screen. And if you found this content useful, we certainly hope you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and thanks for watching.